while. I know it's been a while. My name is Turner Lamont L. Also known as the Sage. And the Sage is a compound word I'm undertaking in order to complete my mission on this physical plane of manifestation. Um, the Sage is historically classified as the ones who know and the agent is someone who transacts or, hand or handles business on behalf of another. So I'm an agent of the, the most high, the higher order, the divine law, the universal law. And, uh, so I look on my YouTube page and it's been a while since I dropped a video. I really have no excuses, but I have been busy. I have been at work, so uh, I know not putting up a video in, in such a long time is kind of like a gap in somebody employment history when they go look for a job. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, um, to my people out there working jobs, keep pressing and to my people out there um, who are entrepreneurs or people outside um, the norm, you know what I'm saying? Keep pressing as well. The same principles apply to both different mindsets. Um, so today is a very special word. <coughs> and sometimes... This, this this word uh, is not clear to people uh, on, on what it is. Uh, and this word uh, just so happens to be jurisdiction, okay? And I'm going to uh, explain what jurisdiction is and how they get it and what you can do about it. Okay, the word jurisdiction, and you can go back and also look at uh, my video, Status Jurisdiction Adjudication. Now, those are, you know, three things that a court needs in place before they can, uh, 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 excuse me, there's two things that need to be in place before a court can adjudicate, and that's status and jurisdiction. So, when you walk in the courtroom, you walk straight in, and they say, hi, who are you for the record, and you, you, you play the name game, and you, and you let them know. Uh, who you thought you were, but who, who they're referring to <clears throat> is not uh, who you thought it was or what you thought it was. Uh, so jurisdiction, and this is a Black's Law Dictionary, fourth edition. I suggest if you're a student of law, please, 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 please do not go and get your uh, words uh, or definitions from uh, general in general uh, 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 dictionaries uh, because the, the the terminology and the words and the meaning behind the words are not the same or are not applicable to each other in different venues or arenas. So we in La La Land, we're in a matrix. We in Never Never Land. We, we trying to follow this yellow big road. We in a place where up means down and down means up. Left means right and right means left. Ah, so ooh, we do we gotta break down words, you know what I'm saying? So if, when you when you hear certain words, once you know uh, and, uh, and, and, and how they're being used and what context they're being used, then you know what's going on. Just like if you go to 28 uh, USC 3002 section 10, and it defines the word person in the United States Code. So you know what? I'm going to um, want to bring that up right here, and we're going to see how the word person. Is um, let me let this load right here. How the word person is uh, defined in the United States Code, but we're gonna get back to jurisdiction uh, first. And so um, the definition of jurisdiction from Black's Law Dictionary, fourth edition. You gotta go get you one of these. You will, you will never be able to find a brand new. I spent about one hundred fifty dollars on this. Um, but this is before they ch start changing the context of words to fit and mean what they wanted to mean in in their fictional fairy tale. Uh, place uh, in order to um, you know subject you so that was a creation of law that wasn't so let's let's look up excuse me let me define uh, jurisdiction the word is a term of large and comprehensive import and embraces every kind of judicial action jurisdiction mm, that's not what we're looking for it is the authority by which courts and judicial officers take cognizance of and decide cases. Cognizance means to recognize. Cognize. Cognizance means to. I'm Hello, Discover Card here to explain our cashback match. We match all of the cashback you earn at oh, the end of your first year automatically. Cool. Okay. It's that simple. Alrighty. 
discover exceptionally common sense. Uh, yeah, you would think that's common sense, but that comes down to contracts as well. <laughs> it's no common sense behind applying for a credit card. It's not. <laughs> If you don't know what you're doing, it's really stupidity. <laughs> but uh, uh, the legal right by which judges exercise their authority, jurisdiction, it is, exists when a court has cognizance of a class of cases involved. Proper parties are present and point to be decided is within issues. Jurisdiction. Hmm. Juris. Diction. Juris. Let's see what juris means. It's Latin. Of right, of law, jurist. Okay. So, there you go. That's a simple um, definition of jurisdiction. Oh, and it gets lengthy. And there's different types of jurisdiction. Um, you have uh, special jurisdiction. Uh, you have limited jurisdiction. You have general jurisdiction. And state courts are courts of general jurisdiction. General. In general, somebody can walk in state court and bring an action against somebody. So what's limited jurisdiction? Limited jurisdiction is federal courts. Um, what's the name of that case? Folly Brothers versus Falardo. Um, all federal legislation applies only to the territories unless a contrary intent appears. That's a that's that's an example of limited jurisdiction. The United States, the federal government, the United States, according to 28 U.S.C. 3215A, which says the United States is a, a federal corporation, has limited jurisdiction, of course. So, um, well, how, well, how? How do you get to the point to where they was able to dictate or determine whether a court had limited jurisdiction? Okay. So, let's go see. Let's go see, okay? And right here, okay. Um, they trying to um. Okay, right here, Penn Hollow versus Doan's administrator. Uh, this is a case. It's seventeen ninety five. Okay, and um. Uh, the citation to this is Penn Hollows versus Doan's administrators, 3 U.S. 54 1 L.ed 57 3 Dow, D A L L, period, 54, comma, Supreme Court of the United States, 1795. Okay. So, what was the decision in the court from this case? Why do I bring this up in regards to special or limited jurisdiction? How does it fit the description? Let's see. And I quote, Inasmuch as every government is an artificial person, an abstraction, and a creature of the mind only, with other artificial persons, the imaginary, having neither actuality nor substance, is foreclosed from creating and attaining parity with the tangible. The legal manifestation of this is that no government as well as any law agency, aspect, court, etc., can concern itself with anything other than corporate, corporate, artificial persons and the contracts between them. I'm shocked and confused. <laughs> I'm shocked and confused. The Supreme Court of the United States said this. That a court cannot attain parity with the tangible. What does that mean? See that? That's the tangible. I'm, I'm sentient. I'm living. I'm breathing. I can interact with nature. I can talk to God. And what's a what, what's a court? What's what's a, the United States government is a federal corporation. How do you start a corporation? All my business owners out there. All my entrepreneurs, uh, all my entrepreneurs. How do you start a corporation, or how do you start an LLC? Articles of organization. After you file your articles of organization with the state in which you plan on conducting business, now you have a legal person. 
But guess what a corporation is? A corporation is a piece of paper. It has no cognitive capabilities. It can't do nothing for itself. So therefore, it needs the aids of living human beings. Do you understand? And this is not meant to be construed as legal advice. If you need legal advice, seek yourself a competent counsel. And please be advised. Um, shout out to Tazi Doc Sean Bay and Yusuf Hell and Brother Hell Razor. I um been students of theirs for a few years, so I pick up a lot of different things in uh, in my studies. So yeah, the special jurisdiction is limited to um the imaginary, having neither actuality nor substance. And the imaginary is foreclosed from creating an attaining parity with the tangible. So that's 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 special. That's limited, very limited jurisdiction. So they clearly define who or what the court is able to interact with. The parity with the with the with the, with, the, with the tangible. I'm the tangible. I'm a, I'm I'm an aggrieved man. I'm a live human being when I walk in the court. So this thing jurisdiction implies that this court, this tribunal, this Nisi Prius court, this kangaroo court, this colorful de facto court of incompetent jurisdiction, when they say we have jurisdiction over you, they're implying to you that we have authority over you. Let me give you another example. Me, as an individual man, I have a, I have a brother. I have two brothers. And if I go to my brother's home, his place of residence, he pays rent or owns whoever you do it. When I pass the threshold of this man's door, I am now subject to, yes, his law, his jurisdiction. So if I walk in my house, or excuse me, if I walk in his house, his place of residence, and be careful with that word, that's just in layman terms when I say residence, for all the people out there who are not, you know, particularly um, familiar with this language. I'm using that language term, residence. Uh, walking to his residence, I'm subject to his law. Hey, bro, kick your shoes off at the door. I'd be like, well, shit, I don't, I don't take off my shoes at home. Okay, then. If you don't want to take off your shoes in my house under my authority and jurisdiction, you have every right to do what? Turn around and walk out of here. But if you decide to stay, guess what? Tacit admission. Tacit procreation. You're implying by your actions, by staying, that you agree to be bound by my law. So, what is something that we can look for that tells us or gives us um, hints as to what jurisdiction they're exercising? Hmm. Because in the Constitution for the United States of America, there's three jurisdictions clearly outlined. Equity, law, common law, law, common law, equity, okay? Uh, and maritime admiralty. So admiralty is the law of sea in a time of war. Maritime is the law of the sea in a time of peace. You see what I'm saying? So those are, even though it's, it's two names, it's, it's two different conditions for the same thing, okay? So it's three jurisdictions described. So common law, in order for somebody to have standing within the common law, there must be who? An injured party. Let me give you a Latin term for injured party. Corpus delicti. Corpus delicti. The body of a crime. Corpus. The body of a crime. Okay, so if I come and close my fist and go and, 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 and go across your and go across your chin with it, you are the body of the crime. I injured another live human being. Okay, so the closest thing to to, to um, a common law court that you see nowadays is uh, Judge Judy, Judge Joe Brown, all these other sitcom TV shows that you see in the lower channels on cable, like two, three, and seven, and stuff like that. So that's a common law court. And uh, for the record, there is no federal common law. Let that be known. Um, then you have equity. 
And equity deals with the contracts and performance of or intercourse between men. A fair of principles. Equity. We come into this thing with common sense. Amen. You made an agreement. You didn't live up to it. You didn't perform no obligations of your contract. All right. He provided a greater weight of evidence. I'm going to rule in your favor. Bow. Judgment. Nobody goes to jail. No penal. Some is attached. It's just a performance. It's equity. It's where people are compelled to perform on the contracts. Equity. And equity and the principles of equity and common law mostly or largely un unwritten. So if you want to look up common law, which is the unwritten law, common law is case law. Common law is common sense. Common law is common to all. Right? I know I'm not supposed to go over here in my neighbor's yard and go take a leak on the fence. I know I'm not supposed to stab her dog. I know I'm not supposed to take anything that's not mine. That's common sense. I know I'm not supposed to murder, uh, maim, or rape. That's why when those guys go to prison, they get no love. The law will be enforced upon persons like that. Um, be uh, be advised. So um, we get it back to this. The jurisdiction of the court. Okay. So when you go into a state court, a court of general jurisdiction, you just can't be, you, you know, walking in court like, like this is a joke or this is a game or, and you're not prepared to do what it takes to defend yourself. How many of you people have been, been in court before and when you leave, you, you feel confused? Like, you feel like you just made it out of there with your life. Like, I'm confused as to what just happened. I really don't understand anything, but you're so scared and petrified of this man in his robe um, fiending or pretending to have authority over you. Well, sir, what's the quote Warren told? Quote Warren told. By what authority did you claim this office? By what authority do you bring this action? Who are you all? Because according to the Constitution, there's only one Supreme Court. Anything under the Supreme Court is inferior to it. So, do you have a delegation of authority order from 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 Congress directly giving you authority to adjudicate an American national? What's a national, Turner Lamar L? What's a national, uh, the sage? What's what, what, what's a national? A national is somebody you want respect to a state. I'm an Illinois national. I'm a Moorish, or I'm a, I'm a, I'm a Moorish Illinoisan. However you want to say it, because your state, a corporate body politic, a group of people who make their rights aggregate and aggregate means collection. So, um, or collective, excuse me. Uh, so with that being said, um, you cannot be, or excuse me, private rights or the adjudication of private rights must be vested with a Article 3 court. An Article 3 court is the court of the judicial. So, when you go into a courtroom, we look for things that point towards how do we know what jurisdiction they're exercising. Uh, I, I'll give you a hint. It's called the law of the flag. The law of the flag. So, when you walk in that courtroom, ones need to be taking in information when you go in, okay, this is that person, this person. Ooh, ooh, ooh okay, okay, I got you. Okay, let's see what's going on. Okay, okay. Oh, is that an American flag over there? Was that a flag over there? Oh, 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 uh oh, 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 what you get into? What you get into? What's what's the significance of uh, 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 fringes, a yellow fringe on the flag? Go look it up. Go look it up. You walk out on the outside of that county building or that courthouse or wherever you go, it's going to be a nice, big American flag. It's going to be flying. It's just going to be the normal American flag. No yellow friends around it. And uh, lady, letting you know that we represent the United States of America. Because guess what? In order for you to activate a certain jurisdiction of court, in order you, in order for you to secure your rights, in order for you to enforce your rights, you have to, uh, 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 you have to uh, invoke a certain jurisdiction. <laughs> and you can do that without saying, "Oh, I'm a national, and I am only." Subject to exclusive equity jurisdiction. Man, you got your mind, bro. Are you out your mind, dude? What's a national? I'm dad, you start defining stuff. Oh, don't get off your school. Please don't. I'm not here to educate you on anything. 
<laughs> you sitting up there behind there, or you representing somebody in this court is evidence of your long education in, in, in public policy, not law. Excuse me. Excuse me. Okay. So you see that flag. Okay. What's what, 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 what's that mean? Yeah. Uh, excuse me. You have you ever 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 seen uh, 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 a ship, uh, uh, a warship? Um, when they go out there, the highest commanding officer is who? Everybody gonna raise their hand. Same time. It's the admiral. Okay? He the honcho. He's the honcho. Okay? So, at a time of war, what type of flag are they flying? An admiral flag. So, when they out there on sea, out there on those treacherous waters, it's flying high. We let you know under what jurisdiction you coming on the Coming under if we put you, if we take you off your vessel and board you on this ship, fly your flag. Some people bring their flags in the court, you know, it's cute, nice little decoration. I really want to, you know, you can do it. You can bring it, you know, I have a Moore's flag. You can bring a little small Moore's flag in court and hang it right there. I'm under the Moore's law and I'm uh, protected by the treaties and this, that. And you can do that, but, you know, you don't need that. That's just that's you. You you playing parts of a dog and pony show. You playing a game. We don't fall into that because we establish who we are by way of what our paperwork and our knowledge, our right knowledge. Oh, don't think you finna go in there and look on the internet for a few hours and think I seen people in there talking about. Oh, all I did was go in court and say I waive all benefits and privileges, and they let me press on out of there. Excuse me. No, please don't think it's that sweet. It's not sweet. And for my people who don't know what that means, it's it's it's, it's, it's not no, it's it's not a, a walk in the park. That's what I mean. It's not sweet. It's, it's not easy. It's not easy to walk in there and read and Google. Come on, man, you're not finna get you're not finna get what you're gonna see in here off Google. You think them people afford can afford to let you know what's going on? So you have a, a multiple types of jurisdiction. You have subject matter jurisdiction. You have personal jurisdiction. Okay. So these things need to be established as well. What's the subject matter? Okay, if you go into a court that's enforcing, stat enforcing statutes, let it be known for and on the record um, that a court that enforces statutes does not act judicially because a statute is an act of the legislature. So the legislative authority was given to the legislator by way of the Constitution through what? Article 1, the legislative. Article 2, the executive. Article 3, judicial. Study. Go look at that constitution. See what's going on. You're going to be like, okay, a lot of things starting to make sense. Okay, so uh, subject matter would be whatever the issue was that was brought before the court. So in the feds or in the state, when the states bring you in, what's the subject matter? The statute is the subject matter. We're claiming that you violate one of our statutes and we have exclusive authority over anything that the legislature uh, creates to, to be able to enforce that. We're Article 1 force. We, infl we enforce statutes. So if we claim that you broke, we have exclusive authority over there, so we have subject matter jurisdiction. That's the matter being discussed here today when we walk in this venue, this colorful venue. Mm. Then you have personal jurisdiction. Personal jurisdiction, excuse me, is jurisdiction that the court has over you or your person. So who's who? Okay, if I go into court and they ask you what's your name, you please do not play the name game with these people. Are you Turner Lamont L? Are you John Doe? I am who I am. I'm an agreed man. I'm here to remain in honor. I'm here to make sure that this get this dispute or this this fiend controversy gets settled honorably. That's all I'm here to do as a national. So anything that's an instrument an instrumentality of the state or the United States, guess what? They have exclusive jurisdiction over it. So what's the instrumentality? Let's see. Uh oh, uh oh. OK, 
Okay, let's see what an in instrumentality is. Instrument what? No, 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 no. Instrumental. Okay. Instrumentality rule. Hmm, I don't see uh, what an instrumentality rule. Maybe I should look this up before I start recording. So let's see what we can get out of there. Instrumental. So that's 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 a base word of instrumentality. Instrumental. So instrumental is serviceable, helpful. So an instrumentality would be serviceable, serviceable, or helpful. Instrumentality would be something, an instrument that something or someone uses in order to be serviceable to the end that they're trying to meet by whatever business they're conducting. So let's think of things that can be instrumentalities of the government of the United States that would help them keep you in servitude, involuntary at that. Mm, let's see, every time I'm riding down the street, I speed past that sign. How do they know that they have authority over me to be able to write a citation? Oh, a driver's license. <laughs> Could that be serviceable or helpful for them people to know that they have authority over that person? Because when, when I pull out my international driver's license as a Morris National, everybody get confused. What's going on? You have you? Did, what, what, what's the first thing that they ask me? Have you have you ever had? Have you ever had a have you ever had a Illinois license? Have you ever had like any do you have a birth certificate or social security card? They looking for that. Those are their instrumentalities. The birth certificate, the social security card, the driver's license, the gun permit, voter registration, anything. That's how they know. But when I when when I show them how a, a foreign national travels, how foreign national travels, turn on my L. What does that say? I'm foreign. Oh, sir, we're, we're having a hard time looking up this number. I don't know what to tell you, man. That's not my job, bro. I'm a national. You see that? I'm a national. International tribal travel identification. You see that? Tax exempt. And oh, yeah, by the way, constructive notice. And if you want to get you one of these, I'll put the link down there. Don Kalam. Um, has a website, donkalan.com. I was a good brother on uh, uh, Facebook and Instagram, Don Kalan. Um, it's called international, uh, excuse me, nationalitytravels.com. He has not paid me to promote this. I just thought this was a useful tool for anybody who wants to be able to rebut the presumption that they're this public person that you did. And then I've had officers who uh, knew who I was before I, I came into this right knowledge and and and, and, and They'd be like, oh, which one? I have, I have a brother. He'd be like, which one are you? And they think they think they know you. And so they want to force me to be this public person. And in, they, and in their face, they'd be like, well, which one are you? Hey, man, I'm Turtle my L. That's, that's who I identify myself as. And you cannot force me to be anything who I haven't or anyone who I haven't identified myself as. Huh? You can't do that. If I want to come into the public and use my public person, I will at my discretion. And what would that benefit me to continue to identify myself as you all as public person? What's the first thing you want to do as soon as you figure out anything else other than the name I gave you? You want to put me in cuffs and subject me to the pain of your fraud. I wish not to participate. But you got to stand on your square from the get-go. You got to let them know out there on the street that, oh, I ain't subject to what you got going on. And guess what? Be very careful how you interact with these agents because ego gets involved. They don't know what you're talking about. Honestly, they don't give a damn. You still going to go for that ride. Do you have that type of resilience to know that you finna get your remedy on the back end? Can you wait? Can you be patient? Or are you going to go in there and oh, you know what? I should have my license and I'm just ready to go home. And I miss my kids. And come on, man. Uh, a lot of these guys ain't even. Come on, man. I don't care about y'all kids. Y'all go to jail. You out here on the street, you won't even buy a shoelace for sure. Man, when you get to jail, you you you, you thinking about shit to tell them. Oh, I know such and such. I need to get to my kids. No, you need to get back out here to this this folly that you participate in. This social media, these dopamine devices. 
I ain't been on I ain't been on social media in, 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 in about a about a, almost two weeks. The only reason I use social media is for my online business. So jurisdiction. They're trying to assert their authority over you from the get-go. My Moors, all my American nationals, whoever, whatever your descent is, or your permanent, whatever it may be, stand on your square. So, subject matter jurisdiction is the jurisdiction and authority that they have over what's being brought in front of the court. Okay? And personal jurisdiction is their authority of you. So, how do they prove personal jurisdiction? Uh, excuse me, what's your address for the record? I live in such and such, such and such, zip code, uh, excuse me, there it is, right there, zip code's a federal zoning, that's authority, authority, where do you live, sir? Oh, I live within the confines of my skin, so my address is wherever I may be standing at any given moment, uh, 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 any given point in time, don't play that game with them, hey, where do you live in my skin, man? I'm here to settle this matter, man, I'm, 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 I'm trying to get out your way as soon as possible. And if, if, if you know some things, you speak in an intelligent tone, you get a favorable reply. Don't go in there ah, belligerent. No, we are nationals. We settle this matter honorably, and we wish to remain in honor. You go in there being belligerent, guess what they're going to do? They're going to hold you in contempt. Get this dumb ass out of here, man. See y'all 10 days still, man. 10 days. Y'all going there practicing, you never sit in jail. <laughs> Enjoy it. Enjoy the peanut butter jelly sandwich just for breakfast with that 2% milk, man. It's terrible. You drink that soft pita, man. You can't perform like you want to when you get home. It's just terrible. Skin breaking out the hard water from the metal sinks. Bumps on your skin. Low vibration people. Bags forming under your eyes. Ultraviolet lights. No sunlight. Oh, no sunlight. The place I went to, he said nobody had been outside for 25 years. I'm shocked and confused. Now, it's 200 inmates in here, and nobody knows that they have the right to go outside. But guess what? If you idiots want to play grab ass all day and run around like you don't have drama hanging over your head, then so be it. Accept the cot that they give you in hell. All right. Now, for them to be able to proceed, they have to have both. You can't have one without the other. And so, if they're attempting to adjudicate you by way of your person, which is your straw man, your LLC, your corporation, you, for once, it would be wise to separate yourself from that presumption. You have different type of presumptions. And, you know, the main ones are rebuttable and conclusive. And they are like what they sound like, complete opposite from each other. A conclusive presumption can be rebutted. A rebuttable presumption can be challenged. So, uh, when you come to court, now you recognize you see this gold fresh. I'm telling you, all right, what's going on? Okay, I don't know, flag thing. I can use it as an advocate. You know, this is what you do with it. Don't make it known that you know. You make it known so you know by asking questions because by uh, asking, ask, asking questions, you credit. That's what creditors do. They ask questions. So when I ask questions, when I'm asking, I'm as king. I'm the sovereign authority in this courtroom. Oh, and don't let nobody tell you anything. I have, I've had people tell me, well, you're a felon in. You've been in prison. You, you're not. How are you a national? You're a felon in. You owe child support. Hey, man, listen, man. Just because, you know, you're scared. You go in court and you go in there and bitch up. It don't mean everybody's scared like you, my man. What you gonna stand for? Huh? In order for you to uh, stand for something, there has to be something to resist. What are you resisting? I'm, I'm resisting this undue tension that you all are trying to put on me mentally. I'm resisting this undue stress you're trying to put on me spiritually and emotionally. Hmm. Now, Ask simple questions. I, I went to federal court and you did just do simple things like because I already know. But you uh oh Derek Turner. Oh, are you Derek Turner? Oh, excuse me. Um sorry, how is that spelled? And he spells it out. I said, um, is that an all they got a microphone right there, so I'll do that. They had a microphone. 
I said, um, is that in all capital letters? I looked up at the, uh, the magistrate, uh, Tom Shanzel Haskins. That's his name. I won't forget it. Uh, before In federal court, before you can get to Article 3 judge, you have to go to a magistrate. But you have to give authority and, um, excuse me, you have to give uh, permission, uh, consent. So he said, uh, yes, it's in all capital letters. I said, uh, is there an initial in there anywhere? Yes, Derek L. Turner. Oh, well, um, let the court take you know, judicial notice that Greg's manual of English says that a name in all capital letters or a name initial is not a proper noun denoting a specific person, but is a fictitious name, the name of a dead man, or a nom de guerre. What's a nom de guerre? Nom de guerre is Latin for a war name. So when you see that officer with his name initial in all caps on his badge, Officer A. Hole. <laughs> <laughs> you see what I'm saying? <laughs> That's a nom de guerre. That's a war name. Because he's waging war on you. And after he put you in them cuffs, you are war booty. Booty means prize. That's what these men out here chasing, that booty. You want that prize from off our backside. Oh, but no, sir. In this situation, you are the prize. We want the prize off your backside. And you get up in here and it's this, it's this admiral court. Didn't I just tell you that the admiral flag is a, a, a flag of war? Of course he has a war name. He's a soldier. He's your opposition. He's the man who will put you six feet under and then go kick it with his kids that night. And plead immunity. I had the right to kill him. I was threatened. I was scared. How does somebody approach me with the openly bearing a firearm and then I scare you into killing me? You didn't have to interact with me. You can let me be by my business. You don't know who you're dealing with. That's why people bail up out these cars when they get pulled over and start shooting at police. He'd rather kill you or he'd rather die before he goes sit in that place again. And if you anything like our ancestors, what did they say collectively, most of them? We'd rather die before we live in slavery or captivity. Hmm. So I just proved it to you. The name, all capital letters, not a proper name, denoting a specific person, but is the name of a, a, fict a fictitious name, the name of a dead man on the girl. Hmm. So right here, this, this case right here, Snyder versus Newell, 44 SC 354, says fictions are invented to give courts jurisdiction. Do you understand? Fictions are invented to give courts jurisdiction. So if fictions are, in, are, are, are created to give courts jurisdiction, does that not solidify the case law that I read at the beginning of the video? Let me go back to it. And as much as every government is an artificial person, an abstraction, and a creature of the mind only, with other artificial persons, the imaginary, having neither actuality nor substance, is foreclosed from creating and attaining parity with the tangible. The legal manifestation of this is... No government, as well as any law, agency, aspect, court, etc., can concern itself with anything other than corporate artificial persons and the contracts between them. Sir, step over here and sign this paper. What you think that is? Huh? What you think that is? You contracting with your fiction, but you don't know that because you're acting as a surety. You're acting as a debtor, not a secure party creditor. So, if you think that I'm feeding you the whole crap of shit, study it. You ain't got to believe me. Prophet Noble Drew Ali, Prophet, Prophet Noble Drew Ali said, question me. But he also said, study, 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 question me. If you question anything, please look it up for yourself. And I, I'm not talking about Google, okay? I'm not talking about Google. These papers I have right here with this case law on it, I had these when I was in the county building fighting a federal case. These are, uh, these are four, five years old. These papers are five years old. I've been having them in this folder for five years. And guess what? It's still just as powerful as it was. And you have to take the meat and potatoes out, out of what's important for your situation. Please do not file a bunch of a voluminous, a high volume, of frivolous paperwork. <laughs> it's a frivolity. I remember a Jewish rabbi taught me that. And I was in a uh, federal penitentiary in uh, Lexington, Kentucky, the Federal Medical Center. 
that's where they send me to do my mental evaluation. <laughs> and there you go the crazy part. I never participated. I never went in there and answered nobody's questions. I didn't put nothing on no paper, but they had 200 questions for me. I'm like, I'm not answering that. I ain't got nothing to do with that, man. Y'all just trying to rattle my cage, man. And I got to stand on my ground. And I was still sitting in paperwork and objecting to what you were doing while I was on the road. They going to shake your cage. Or they going to take you down through there. Are you ready? Are you scared? Then die. Try it again next time, man. If you scared, die. Somebody came into your home right now and uh, put your family in danger. Would you be willing to die? Yeah, I would. Of course I would. It's a different feeling when the barrel is pointed at you. It's a different feeling when you know you're facing imminent danger. <laughs> this could be the last time. Are you afraid? I, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm scared of a lot of things. Mm-hmm. I'm scared of a lot of shit. But I ain't got no fear. Man. Fear gets you killed. That's why I'm still standing here. I acted when I was scared. That's the difference between being scared and having fear. Courage. Courage.